Well, hello. Welcome, everyone. Today is July 14th, Thursday, July 14th. Welcome to our Thursday community call. Uh, and I'm really excited. Today, we're going to have a, a presentation and discussion on uh, the nature of cross-pollination and knowledge ecosystems and kind of how we went about it, uh, or how, how this topic even came up in the first place at SCURF. Um, and I'm just going to provide some context before passing it off to uh, Hazel and Fotis, who are actually going to be presenting today and walking through uh, yeah, their journey. And I, I don't want to take anything away from, from what they're going to be mentioning. But in short, uh, just to provide a little bit of context, so right, far step back, what's going on at SCURF, what's our general mission, right? We're, we're interested in the facilitation between those generating knowledge and those trying to apply knowledge uh, in useful ways to catalyze more kind of useful outputs, more useful activity, um, just to, for the generation of something that can help the, the industry advance and what that something is can take different shapes and forms. And so in terms of our overall strategy, right, we started with a very specific problem around information discoverability for those buildings. So how can we make research uh, that is frequently, uh, you know, in dense academic paper, in dense academic papers, more accessible to those who are in industry? And so we started doing the research summary grants program. We started building our content, uh, our, our forum, our content pipeline and team, our engagement team to start interacting with that. And right, that was kind of the the origins of where we started with this larger question of the nature of useful facilitation of knowledge to actually accelerate useful outputs, right? Or a, a bias for action as we got from the Impact Networks book, right? And like, theoretically, I, I think all of us have, a, have an emotional sense of where, where, you know, are we feeling that things are feeling productive or going in that kind of way, but actually systematically building it and understanding, especially as something as broad as Web3, given the different topics, what does it actually mean to uh, actively facilitate knowledge? And what are all the versions of facilitation? Uh, and so uh, part of the logic and, and where I first got really excited in, in chatting uh, with both uh, Hazel and POTUS earlier this year uh, was around, you know, very interested in governance. Hopefully you all saw the, the Deep Springs community call we did a couple months ago at this point, if I'm remembering correctly. And POTUS has contributed some research summaries and uh, we were clearly converging that they were both interested in a particular topic around DAOs and governance. Uh, and I had some ideas around what could be some uh, effective versions of facilitating and exchanging knowledge. Uh, but the real goal, and I, I, again, I, I don't want to actually get into any of the of the juiciness is I don't want to take away the fun from the presentation. But one thing I do want to stress before handing it off is, right, when we think of what does it mean to successfully cross pollinate knowledge between those who have it and those who need it, right, there's so many things to unpack in that statement. What does cross pollination mean? Who needs it? Who has it? How do you define any of these? How do you mean? Right. So this is not meant to be a let us tell you how we do this kind of thing right like we are at the super early days of what cross-pollination means broadly and what how it means for skirt so again really don't don't take this as like we are telling you how a thing is please approach this with the open mindset of we have no clue how this actually looks we are just taking the first stab at what is the right first step and if anyone here is excited motivated enthused uh, please let uh, anyone on this team, uh, uh, Fotis, Hazel, or myself know. And again, we are super, super early stages, and I'm very grateful uh, to to both Hazel and Fotis for being open to going on such an open-ended journey uh, because it can be frustrating dealing with never-ending uncertainty. And so I appreciate uh, both of you being willing to, to dive into it. But anyway, that's enough of my preamble. Uh, with that, I will uh, stop there and I will go ahead and pass it off. And I guess in case anyone, I, hopefully, I, I see we have a few new folks on the call and whatnot. So maybe it, it would be cool if you all can just give a very brief like intro on yourselves uh, and then actually get into it. Because I, I don't know if everyone on the call knows all yet. And yeah, so please, Otis and Hayes, I'll pass it off to you. All right. Uh, I'll, start, I'll, I'll start this off, but Hazel, feel free to interrupt me at any point. Um, this is uh, a co-creation uh, anyway, um, the whole role. Uh, and let's see, that would be very uh, awesome. I, I'm trying to present. I'm not sure if you can see uh, what I see. We, we saw you for a second, but... but... Yeah. Is it there now? Yes. All right. So thank you, Eugene, for giving this high-level overview and context to this role and this whole project and uh, what has been. 
and what it is and how uh, fluid it is at the moment while we're trying to concretize it a bit. Uh, so I want to start off by a high level description, a definition of this role, which is in no way final. Uh, it is something that we have conversed. Um, it is uh, it is a problem, like what this cross-pollinator has been a problem from day one, uh, it is still an open one. Um, uh, but this is what we, uh, the, the vision of the position is currently. So I'll, this is probably the only text in this presentation, this block of text that I'll try to read out as is. So a community cross-pollinator is an ecosystem player able to navigate the complex landscape of Web3 communities to make meaningful connections between them and share knowledge across them. Uh, successful cross-pollination requires the bridging of communities that can lead to joint outcomes which produce a collective solution space for the ecosystem. Uh, usually the work of a cross-pollinator looks like that of a double agent, uh, being able to easily immerse oneself in the culture as a cross-pollinator, in the culture and the language of uh, one community or more, as well as being able to sympathize with their mission and understand what they are building. Um, and learnings from this interaction flow to SCARF as a knowledge consolidation layer uh, for the mapping and systematization of knowledge of the ecosystem, but the impact of a cross-pollinator's work should be felt in the net value created uh, by these connections. So it's a more of an ecosystem role. Uh, therefore, a community cross-pollinator cultivates the ground on which ecosystem-wide positive sum outcomes grow. Uh, and also the focus of uh, cross-pollinators initially is on DAOs and governance, as Eugene mentioned. So this is the vague high-level overview of what a cross-pollinator is. Um, and now, uh, in practice, what this looks like uh, is in itself a problem that we have been trying to solve. And so here, in answering how to cross-pollinate, how this looks practically, we stumbled across various existential problems of community cross-pollinators, let's say. Uh, oh, sorry, what, what, was, what, what, was there a hand raised at some point? And if there's any anything uh, in the middle, just feel free to interrupt us and jump in. Yeah, all right. Uh, so do you continue? Uh, yeah, feel free to keep going. I'll also jump All right. in like any ones that come up. Okay, okay. So uh, the, the questions can range from very, very uh, general. What are we cross-pollinating? Like, are we cross-pollinating between communities, between DAOs, among uh, actors? Uh, are we trying to breed industry and academia? Uh, and they can they can be more refined. Like how how deeply should we embed ourselves in communities? This is something that we found out like uh, very quickly because initially what we did as cross pollinators was jumping in different communities, uh, trying to figure out, trying to participate actually, uh, somehow like ethnographic research in a sense, uh, trying to figure out the language, trying to figure out what they doing their outputs, what the community vibes are, all of these aspects. But we discovered that there's an important trade-off that with more participation, there is better understanding of this community, but there's uh, less uh, inter-community understanding. Like it takes too much time to be embedded in one community and it's, uh, it's so much effort that uh, we realized that we cannot do this like with, we can do this with one or two or even three, but <laughs> Uh, it is very difficult to do in a larger scale. Um, so this is one of the most important problems we found out very early on. Also, uh, there are the questions such as, uh, what does our output look like? Should we be uh, to be having deliverables or is it more like a recurrent thing? Uh, is it more like uh, work that is evergreen? Um, and so what should we be doing exactly? Many people have um, voiced their own opinions of, of what a cross-pollinator is. 
Uh, are we doing research? Are we being researchers? This ethnographic component has been uh, uh, a common uh, thread. Many people have been uh, seeing cross-pollinators as researchers in a way. Or are we doing facilitation? Are we doing operational support? And I, I, I liked uh, at some point Michael's uh, <laughs> suggestion that we can be influencers, which I had to also include. So, uh, okay. Uh, let's see what else. Like, okay, what values are we creating for the interest tree and for uh, for, for scurf? Uh, and how do we relate to other verticals? What is basically the thing that um, are, uh, that's cross pollinators are providing to the space and scurf uh, and criteria for success and also, there's the question of how independent uh, uh, cross-pollinators could be, uh, if they can be supported by a single organization like SCURF, or if they can be considered a public good. And so this has informed uh, how we think of this role and how what problems we should be solving. Um, and so, my, yeah, yeah, Hazel. My quick okay. theory on, on, that, on that slide was, um, I think these are all like problems or like questions we jump like back and forth um, when we are like conceiving um, this role. But I feel like um, I, I think the major question for me is what exactly are we cross pollinating? And I think my like I think the decision we've made um, at this point where we're at right now is that we started off thinking that we're cross pollinating between communities. Um, or like between like, like us being in, like jumping like 10 community calls and things like that. But I think right now we've landed at a place where we see that our role as cross pollinators between industry and academia, um, but like sitting closer to the industry side, um, because we see that at least a lot of momentum within SCURF um, and within like uh, like decentralized research, research hub and things like that and like pushing the academia side. Um, forward and having like building val valuable connections there and we want to be able to like be closer on the industry side and be able to connect the these two things together um i think that's the the shortest the shortest answer i can give to how our focus is changing where we are at right now yes and um there's to, to also add to that there's also the issue of scales uh, something that we had, that was brought up during brainstorming uh a brainstorming session with other community stewards and uh i think renee was the one to mention that okay uh maybe the scale to uh focus would be uh not whole communities but maybe people uh between these communities and what they do so there's so uh all these aspects and yes the focus is is uh let's say on the more long term towards industry and academia and we'll get to that also in the next slides um, so yeah, this has been an exploratory phase till now. Uh, we have focused on more uh, high level um, questions and also exploring uh, different kinds of workflows. What uh, and we have found some what what doesn't work. We have not found out yet what does work. Um, uh but um yeah th this is the exploratory element of this and the co-creation element uh that uh, and the, the chaos of being a cross pollinator um but we have some more concrete uh stuff like lists of organizations uh of people uh, which is a database on which we can act on um, to cross-pollinate uh, people and organizations. And we have prioritized some of them. Um, also, uh, we have tried on doing some kinds of mappings. Uh, uh, we have... Uh, being immersed in various communities and learning the territory and we have been generating various research questions such as what are what should the relevant data be for the mappings that we want to produce uh in order to help people navigate the space and uh, help the sense making 
And so we have been in this phase one, which was very chaotic, uh, but very interesting too. Uh, and the initial things that we were uh, trying to do was to make a job description for what the cross pollinator is, um, explore different communities, uh, consume content, and uh, but it seemed like uh, maybe this is more like a project because the role is still very hard to define. So cross, we seen we try to see now cross pollination as a th as a thing that we are doing rather than us being uh, cross pollinators. And so there will be a project proposal. Uh, there is one on the way. Hazel can um, elaborate more on that. Um, there's uh, also the aspect of bringing communities together and refining our project management at this point. Yeah, basically phase zero is the things that we have done. Phase one is the project proposal we're currently putting together um, going forward. So what you see from phase zero to phase one, phase one is like narrowing down, like how we are refining our focus of how how are we existing in, in, in the like, ecosystem that could be most beneficial to the industry, to, to SCURF. Um, to the to the to the, to the landscape, um, yeah. And I think there there are many like from phase one we like we found like we learned many valuable things of like what exactly is this this road doing? For example, there's the navigation part of it. There's like us navigating different communities. There's the translation work bit. Um, credit to Paul um, of like us being able to translate a lot of the lexicon used across different communities and across like say industry and research. Um, and there is like the general like landscaping. Uh, like mapping aspect of it, and there's def definitely like a connect, connect, like connection part of it, um, where it's like, um, yeah, like connecting one one thing with another, like connecting, like building, like pointing resources to places and then pointing people to the right space. And I think mm -hmm. just all of these in mind, I think like phase one is one of the like the bite size um, thing. Is something we want to bite off? Like we want to like first start it with like biting off. Um, with the project proposal, with something like a UX interview, which be this in the next slides. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and also, I have to say that uh, for phase one, phase zero, actually, uh, was uh, was something that uh, we did so nobody else had to. So <laughs> we were crazy enough to go through all that uncertainty. Uh, so, so that um, this is more refined and. Uh, people don't have to go through that anymore. And so uh, this is the roadmap. That the, it is not a final uh, roadmap, but it is what we see as uh, doable um, during the next, let's say, six months or so. Uh, and it is, um, there's some levels, there's some different time, uh, different how you say words don't work that well <laughs> language doesn't work that well at this point what I wanted to say is that um, there's some short-term um, goals there's some short-term things that we will be doing which will be basically interviews of various community stewards that we have uh, figured out as being the most relevant in this space of uh, DAOs and govern governance and research on DAOs and governance. Um, there's also a more medium term strategy, which is to create a system for people to be able to come to the forum and use it as a hub to report on what is happening. So we don't have to go through uh, just embedding ourselves in all these different communities and they can come and report and then we can go more in a more focused way uh, in the communities themselves. Um, and towards the end of this roadmap, there will be an... Uh, we are planning to have a mapping of the industry players uh, that exist, mapping the landscape uh, of problems that industry players face uh, and who is building the solutions to that. And also um, to be able to connect this with what happens in academia, with uh, MetaGov's project uh, on open problems in DAO science, and uh, Eugene's initiative in network mapping, on which we 
we'll see also later on. And so this is um, the phase one as we see it now. And so, um, Hazel, if you want, you can jump in at this point um, to give a little bit more context to this interviews, this one-on-one -on -one interviews that we will be doing um, uh, during the next weeks or month or so. Um, sure. Yeah. This this is this is what we've. Um, I think this is what we um, came up with after sitting down with basically all the department has um, in 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 SCARF. Um, and I think like I yeah the, the goal of the goal of these like for 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 one is to come up with like a some sort of like problem document like solicit problem from the industry side that's somewhat um, um, somewhat similar like a some, somewhat along the lines of like open problem in Dow science but like with more focus on solution and with more focus on like how it connects to like academia like what sort of solution does industry want to request um, from academia um, so yeah um, I, so we're gonna be like asking the Dow leaders and operators some questions like oh like what are your biggest like pain points like on Dow governance what are some of the solutions you've tried um, how well do they work? Like, how are you thinking about these problems? Um, and I think that that's an important part of it. And the second, the second part of it is sort of like a UX research. It's like, how can SCURF, like, how can they continuously engage with SCURF and like utilize um, SCURF's academia connection and utilize SCURF like forum, utilize SCURF community to be able to like collaborate, so to, to be able to like solve um, and talk about some of these problems together. Um, yeah, and and we do want to, uh, we do want to like bring it like we I think from these conversations we want to like establish like some sort of like forum based like in, like interaction. We want to bring things back to a forum and allow people to interact there. Um, and I think we do want to, um, yeah, like a part of the outcome of that it will be like some sort of some sort of like report on like what is what does the industry people care about right now? What are the problems? Um, are there people in academia working on like a similar set of problems? How can we link them up? Like, how can we put them in conversation with each other um, and bridge and bridge these conversations? Um, yeah. So I think for the next couple of weeks um, for this summer, uh, we want this thing to be like we want this interview UX interview process to be like value adding um, for SCURF. Um, and I think that's I think us as cross pollinators would be um, like for now the best actors um, to to do that. And I'm excited to just sit down with all the department heads after after the whole process and and talk about what the um, like where where we go from here. Yeah, because this is something that seems to be very relevant and very uh, important, not only in terms of uh, the cross pollination roadmap, but also uh, for other verticals. Uh, we have seen that. Um, there's uh, maybe some um, some gap of knowledge of what is happening in the industry. There's uh, better knowledge on ha what happens academically and in, kind of in terms of research. And uh, this is basically an attempt to fill that gap. And so there will be um, there will be a lot of knowledge gathered from this initiative. Uh, which uh, will be in itself uh, a very valuable thing, a very valuable deliverable for our uh, group, from our group, uh, but also it can feed to um, the next thing in the roadmap, which is uh, a reporting system. Well, I'm not sure if SCARF Embassy is the right word. Like, uh, we have been <laughs> a bit skeptic, a bit uh, unsure. But this is exactly what it is. But basically, um, to give a TLDR, it is a way uh, to get all these people that we have been interviewing uh, on the forum to report on what is happening in uh, inside their communities, uh, any outputs, any interesting um, uh, projects that they're starting, uh, or if they are running workshops or events. Uh, and also have them engage with each, uh, with each other and interact with what uh, with what other communities are reporting 
between themselves um, so as to have this like automatic cross-pollination happening on the forums. And so uh, we have um, a list of organizations that we have found as most relevant. Uh, from them, the, uh, we have found some community stewards which we can interview, um, and then we can have like uh, uh, we can utilize the community section um, uh, in Scarf uh, to be able to do this uh, to have ecosystem community reports, which will be informed uh, by the answers that people gave in the interviews and uh, the feedback that we have from other verticals. And then we can have a, we can do some cross-pollination work on those reports that is more focused, uh, such as finding associations and connections, uh, generally building or doing uh, some kind of facilitation and uh, spark uh, conversations, which is more the engagement part of it, uh, which the engagement thing can also help uh, to uh, do this more joint um endeavor and there's also the research part uh of uh, going deeper into the work that's happening once we know what they themselves also deem as important uh and so these are different paths of what course of uh, work can be uh, when this is established but establishing this in itself uh is also uh a great achievement so and we'll see how uh, this goes. This will also be kind of an experiment in itself. So it, it would be interesting uh, to see how it goes. And also, if you have any feedback on that, it will be very, very valuable. Mm -hmm. and so and this we, is, oh, sorry, sorry, Hazel, go on. No, we do see a lot of ways that this, all of these can contribute to different verticals um, in, in sort of like Maria, you said, um, like newsletter, um, Michael and Paul, like community, like forum activities. Um, which we will get to um, in in a second, but I, I think I also want to like make the like the differentiation between um, like as cross cross pollinator we have like the main quests of like cross pollinating and they're mm -hmm. all like side quests that we can get to um, as much as like we do want to be but like, we are still navigating our place in scurf um, and I think we do want to contribute to scurf in different verticals as much as possible but we also want to just keep our heads straight on what's the main. Uh, what's what's the major um, activity we're doing? And keep some keep focus as as a cross pollinator, um, and not just overcrowd our our attention. Yeah, which was a problem that we faced early on. That this uh, very this dissipation of attention, uh, this uncertainty, um, and yeah, if you're if any of you is into gaming. Uh, this is like the main quest line <laughs> with uh, the, the previous part of the interviews and this uh, connect together and uh, this is more down the line uh, but there's also a more long-term goal which is to have an interesting act industry actors map uh, so um, getting to know which players are relevant and which problems they're trying to solve um, and how successful they've been is very important. Uh, there are no good ways to actually be able to, to visualize it in a, in a simple manner or have this knowledge aggregated and compiled. So um, it's what we will trying to do uh, as cross-pollinators as part of this cross-pollination project in the long term. Uh, you can see here a kind of a uh, map um, that is uh, it's one of the first things that came out like one or two weeks when we went into that. Uh, it is not to be taken with a grain of soul. Uh, it's, it's not to be taken very uh, seriously, but this is how something like this can look. There's also a mirror board. I will share the slides with you later. This is actually a link if you click on that and you can go to a mirror board and see uh, a whole interactive map that has also information about various organizations and uh, uh, how they interrelate with each other. Uh, um, okay, so this is the mapping that uh, we hope to uh, be able to help towards constructing in terms of the industry side, but there's also 
the network mapping initiative uh, that uh, will also include uh, recruiting interns to actually help with uh, social graph uh, visualization and uh, network uh, theory mapping kind of to kind of uh, associate this to the industry with the academia and be able to have something more tangible to uh, talk about when we uh, when we talk about these connections, these associations that we're trying to establish. Um, and also, yeah, I want to uh, mention that the, we have been collecting a list of organizations and people, and even a list of lists uh, in a, an Excel uh, in a seat document. Uh, these are the ten most relevant uh, organizations uh, that we found. Let's say to that we can directly go into, and that we know their culture, and that we can speak about and uh, 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 cross pollinate more easily. But there's also others, and anybody can uh, add to this list. Uh, we will open it up later on. Uh, if they find that there is uh, an organization doing very interesting work that should be included in the whole cross-pollination um, endeavor. And so, uh, moving on uh, away from the main quest line and the, uh, the main, uh, the, our roadmap, let's say, uh, this, it seems like there's also various other stuff that cross pollinators can do uh, when it comes to um, their interrelations to other verticals. So initially, we're providing outside of SCURF, bringing, trying to bring knowledge in or, and trying to aggregate it in a way and trying to establish connection between organizations, which was very difficult at first. Uh, and we started interacting with other verticals. And we found out that cross pollination could also happen internally in SCURF. Uh, in integrating different efforts together. So uh, the, uh, the reporting system and in the community section could, for example, uh, help integrate discovery with engagement. Um, the reports can feed the, uh, the newsletters uh, and uh, the interactions between different communities on the forum uh, and sparking more conversations and be the part of the engagement. So uh, we could say that we, uh, um, by this function of cross-pollination, uh, essentially we could view cross-pollination as a horizontal rather than a vertical. And so this is one way to visualize this, this uh, being able to go across all the different verticals and find out if there's connections that can be made in SCURF. Uh, and we think that SCURF can benefit in various ways from cross pollinators beside the project's roadmap. So let's see some of those. Um, there's this aspect of bringing back this uh, community, uh, the, abandoning ourselves in communities, this community micro ethnographies, um, but doing it in a more focused way once we have a more established way of Communities reporting on what they're doing. Uh, Paul has, uh, in our conversations with Paul, uh, he mentioned some very interesting aspects of that, what we could be doing. We could be doing some cultural translation work of uh, the usage of various words that we see floating around and how different communities interpret them. Uh, and also we could have like a lexicon uh, used by industry and by academia, and uh, if there is connections in terms of language that we don't see uh, superficially, but uh, might exist on a deeper level. Uh, there's also the aspect of IRL uh, cross-pollination and event participation, uh, which, will, which looks very different from what cross-pollination looks like in uh, digitally. Uh, there's also the aspect of content scouting because as well cross pollinators going around naturally being inclined uh, to explore and being curious we have come across and keep on coming across very interesting uh, projects very interesting research that uh, that we could serve with the discovery team 
uh, and also can be part of the newsletter. There's, uh, there's also uh, other aspects of operational management, uh, running book labs, workshop organization, reading groups, etc. And there's also these crypto fix so, um, side project that we could, uh, as pollinators, I think we, could, we are very suitable to work towards. Um, and also beyond that, there's uh, because we have a focus on governance and DAOs, there's non governance related uh, cross pollination that can happen, such as like in this side, in terms of uh, privacy tech, in terms of SBDs, accreditation, uh, stuff like that, and even non scarf related cross pollination. Uh, as uh, cross pollinators have this kind of autonomy uh, instead of uh, scarf to be able to move around. And this is a DAO research hub where which uh, um, it will also be a part of this whole cross pollination effort in in the more like DSI space. And yeah, th that was it. So uh, feel free to share your feedback uh, because this is very much needed. Uh, as I said before, this is a co-creation uh attempt so it'd be, be good to do this uh together and also if you think that there's something like uh an initiative or a github issue that you find being relevant to cross pollinators uh, you can ping us or make a group chat in discord so we can connect yeah um thank, thank you for this and thanks everybody for for being here yeah i would love to like open it up to questions and hearing you guys' thoughts. Um, but the first question I want to address from, from Faith in the chat um, is, what do you guys mean by like governance development? Um, I think just a lot of things go go, go under um, what governance development could be. And I think DAO governance is definitely the first thing we are focusing on that we definitely hope to uh, like branch out um, into more like a broader like cross-pollination work. And I mm, I see governance development as just so many things. Um, it is ev everything that contribute to how can communities govern themselves better? Like it could be infrastructure and tooling, but it can also be like something more philosophical, um, something more like political, like how political is the community, or what, what's the po politics bit um, look like? And it's funny, it's hi Renee, like it's funny seeing you there. You're now certified pop and important communities in our slides. Um, yeah, but I, I want to pass the mic to, to questions. Um, um, the, the first hand I saw is Jay Ringel. Am I pronouncing your name right? Yeah, it's John. Thanks. Uh, this sounds really interesting. Uh, there's a lot, I think that has a lot of value, specifically the industry map. I think that um, I would love to see that thing built out. Um, in terms of cross-pollinating and uh, the angle you guys are looking at it from, it sounds like there's two perspectives, one being sort of connecting communities to one another and another being uh, connecting industry to those communities or to those industry. And I'm just curious how much um, background work you did in looking or how much background work informs like your decisions or, or the, the presentation really about how that can go about. Because I know um, you brought up the gaming industry uh, and that is a very good example of uh, communities cross-pollinating. Uh, there's a tool, for example, the IRC, where people just join a server and there's thousands of different channels that people just join fluidly through sort of community events that are very low key and not really focused on anything. They get to hear about each other's different projects and um, that's how they sort of cross pollinate. There's not an individual going out and doing it. There's an event bringing people together and then they just kind of talk, sort of like hanging out excuse me, hanging out after a conference. It's not really the conference that's cross-pollinating, it's the, the beer afterwards. Uh, and then with industry, connecting industry to, to, these in, uh, to the academia, um, there's a whole field that does this called science communication that has been around for um, a very long time and it, it applies to the gaming industry as well. There's a lot of uh, community that talks to the industry about what game they wanna see built and who's building what game. And then it, with science, there's you know universities doing research and then trying to get the research into a product. So they have to hire someone to actually talk about what the research is and explain it to an industry player. So uh, again, to restate the question, just to 
I'm just curious how much background work is, is put into what um, might be being built here. Yeah, I'm happy to jump in on that one. Um, so yeah, let me let me give some overall uh, context, right? Because I think you brought up something very important, and uh, I just want to make sure that 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 was clearly differentiated, right? So this is not meant to sort of replace all versions of facilitation of knowledge, cross pollination of knowledge, uh, or or uh, uh, of related activities, right? Three kind of general buckets were brought up of, you know, there's the facilitation of information and that can, and general, uh, right, facilitation can of different kinds can happen in events. And then we're separately thinking about it as a role, right? So there's different kind of buckets and prisms to explore here. And what we've been doing with the forum and some of the things we're talking about um, with the live, uh, the live stream project and things like that, right? We're thinking of how do we actually facilitate more interaction around information that already exists on our forum, and how do we produce more actual active facilitation around that? Uh, there's the separate thing you were mentioning, like video game conferences, and uh, that's more what we're trying out now and supporting the Web3 workshop with Quinn DuPont and the Stanford DAO thing that's happening uh, on September 1st, right? We are actually experimenting with dedicated events to see what does actually getting academics and industry folks uh, in single rooms together look like and what is the highest value uh, specific version of facilitation because, you know, specific nuanced communities are gonna need different types of uh, facilitation, right? What's needed in governance, versus auditing versus cryptography could look pretty different. And we have to be attuned to those differences and not just create a singular formula in any in, in all areas. Uh, and the last part is also thinking about it. Well, if we have these repositories of knowledge, we have all these separate networks and communities. Well, what happens if we actually experiment with, well, what is a role type that is dedicated to helping all of these individual components stay and feel connected and all act towards that goal of sharing that knowledge for the purpose of some kind of you know bias for action, useful outcomes in the end. So this cross pollinator role and what we're working on with uh, Fotis and Hazel is kind of experimenting with just that role part, right? There's different streams at Scurf experimenting with different portions of what you were just bringing up. Uh, and so specifically, we're uh, this is in the context of experimenting with a role that could add to the other streams that we're experimenting with and building. So to the direct answer of how much pre-work was done, uh, I mean, we've talked to a variety of folks actually uh, right at the pretty early on uh, in, in Fotis and Hazel joining, we actually had on a few uh, folks who are leading governance researcher, community building, et cetera, from different organizations. And we said, hey, our idea is to create a role that can facilitate this kind of benefit uh, what does that actually look like? What are the, what are your problems? And right, that's that alongside us also sourcing what are your problems as DAO practitioners and things like that. And this is all just in DAOs and governance. And we want to figure out how to replicate it in all of these different areas. So I'm I'm at danger of going off on an even longer ramble. So I'll stop myself there. Hopefully that uh, that covers it. At least gives a sense of it. At least. Yeah, that's really informative. Thank you. The uh, the idea of having a specific person dedicated to it. Uh, yeah, sounds interesting. Um, next up, we have Chris. Yes, thank you. Um, so this actually is one of the main things that I think SCURF has to work on, and it has been working on concerning uh, internal cross-pollination while trying to build external cross-pollination. And I've been working on a similar concept for the academic side and i think what had to happen is that we had to have a strategy for the industry side we had to have a strategy for the academic side in order to actually then create a cohesive strategy to connect both sides um, so in that context for the academic side the goal is to establish uh, a, a formal approach to creating a repository of specialists that are then able to help us uh, through the identification of gaps in literature through rolling literature review, either do secondary research to bring the research that has been done to the forefront, which can then be posted on social media, or to then do primary research to then close the gaps that have then been identified through the, the literature reviews. Um, and in the process, report on the forum what literature reviews have been accomplished, where the, uh, the current research exists and where the gaps are currently to 
explain why we are then identifying uh, case studies by either physical location or by research area to then uh, take a specialist and connect them to that area. So in the process, one of the things that had been discussed is um, creating a repository specialist that are not necessarily employees of SCURF becomes an even more objective way to say, if we as an organization are identifying industry uh, industry problems that we have qualitatively discovered by asking them and then identifying specialists that are able to apply the theoretical frameworks that have either been discovered or to do case studies to discover the frameworks that can uh, be applied elsewhere, then we become the organization that does more of a directed cross-pollination cross -pollination rather than a simple cross-pollination for the sake of cross-pollination, where in doing a directed cross-pollination, we are identifying gaps and closing those gaps, whereas, and in that, we are more aligned with a movement organization or uh, the movement aspect of what was described in the impact networks rather than just a connective organization. So I just wanted to allude to, it also helps to map everything so it's easier for people to visually know what's happening. So then obviously we're going to connect further on this, but knowing that the initiative, one problem is that if things are not finished, it's it's difficult to know that they are occurring unless they're completely transparent and some things don't need to be are not useful to be shown until they're finished so we're in this weird gap where if one part of the organization is working on one thing and it's not finished the other side of the organization may not know about it but that sort of cross pollination is or cross pollination is uh going to be more helpful in connecting those internal uh, directives while also applying that concept externally. Yeah, thanks, Chris. I, I feel like we sat down with this one once, um, and we are definitely working off like the same, like the, the, the problem, the defined problem that, that she mentioned, which is like, oh, like there's like a lack of engagement, like of industry people like, existing on, on, on the platform. Um, she, she, she told us that there was like a excellent seminar of like academia like async seminar going on the forum like a good circulation discussion but there's no industry and i feel like we are sort of working i think we definitely picked that up and we are thinking through a solution but we didn't know that you're working on something like this i would be mm. thrilled to sit down and chat with you with this yeah for sure and i want to mention that uh, one important thing is that um and, and this is the reason why we moved towards say a uh, calling it cross-pollination rather than just as cross-pollinators, just doing a thing. Uh, because cross-pollination requires, it's not, it's dependent on all the other modules that are around it. And so um, it's others input is very important here. And it's like, we're kind of synthesizing it also internally. So yeah, of course, is making this connections and this lines more <laughs> tangible is a big part of it. Uh, Paul? Yeah, thank you for putting this together. Um, I can see in some ways uh, why the term embassy might not necessarily work for you. Because like, as I see where, kind of the work that you're trying to do, um, it's, almost, it's almost like the SCURF is fostering a, I, mean, I did like your mentioning of, of, of a public good, right? So as SCURF develops as an organization right scurf has its mission and its vision and as we develop you know there's going to be a way that scurf does that right so we're doing this kind of long tail stuff um you know here's how scurf does our mission of connecting industry and academia and um you know when i think of embassies i think of like an ambassador right so an ambassador would go into other communities kind of representing scurf that would be known that you represent scurf and you know you're advocating for SCURF and SCURF's way and learning from other communities and kind of bringing that back. It kind of sounds like 
what a cross pollinator does is it exists as a extra organizational entity that um, doesn't necessarily represent an entity, but maybe represents an entire space's connectivity, um, which I think is really interesting conceptually. Like I know that we as an organization are kind of fostering that, but I like your idea of this being a public good, and I'm kind of interested in your thoughts on like as this role of cross pollinator and maybe. Um, topic specific cross pollinator develops. Uh, how does this become a public good as opposed to, let's say, a SCURF initiative? Um, I think we have talked about. I think there, there's like a like a larger. I think the SCURF bit that I'm thinking about right now is very is like in SCURF's mission of like creating impact networks. Um, I think we have like had conversations in the past about to what extent this role fits in with the centralized research hub instead of SCURF. Um, but I think that that calls into like other logistical questions like funding and whatever. Um, yeah, I, I yeah. sort of for the Eugene. Uh, yeah, that's one of those where I, it, it, the only honest answer is TBD. Um, I think the goal in figuring this out was uh, this did initially at least come up in my mind as trying to think through this landscape of kind of core SCURF and we're focused on facilitation across all domain areas and then we build these decentralized research hubs going out to have focused facilitation within each research domain and so then we have this kind of landscape of deep experts who we can always tap and pull into SCURF proper and kind of a uh, you know blurry lines of formality and informality which is already kind of the case with SCURF anyway um, and so this was really, uh, yeah, just kind of uh, taking advantage of the opportunity of the fact that uh, both uh, Fotis and Hazel were already spending time in a lot of DAOs and were already in a bunch of the communities we wanted to explore uh, or that, you know, we, we just know of as reputable communities overall. And so uh, it just became an interesting time to experiment. Uh, so, yeah, th this was not a, a focus like here's the clear roadmap of how this is meant to evolve as much as, oh, we have a chance to run an experiment for the summer. Um, uh, yeah, and just kind of go from there. So I'm also, that's why I'm also really excited to see, you know, what are the versions of content output? What are the versions of getting information into SCURF that's not dependent on us? What just pipeline can we establish? Uh, and very importantly, how do we develop some kind of documentation of what happened? in order to then have a basis to start with when thinking about, well, what does this mean for cryptography, for scaling, for uh, oracles, for whatever else? Um, yeah. And I'd say like this doc documentation part is something that's, uh, if anybody has any advice or resources on how to do it better, it would be very useful for us to actually have good uh, documentation of what we uh, come across. And before we close off, um, we can, yeah, John. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll be happy to uh, find some resources for you, but they're all going to be about um, uh, the current way academia and industry connects, which is not through individual roles. So I think this, this role is really interesting. Uh, and now that I'm thinking about it, I have a philosophical question that definitely can't be answered in time, but it's sort of like the the quantum effect of this all so if you actually give someone a role that says your job is to go out and cross pollinate does that kind of take away the power of that person because everyone knows that's who that person is or is the goal here to build a space where someone like that manifests organically and then can go out and become who they are which is just a connector of people Schrodinger's I, cat version of cross pollinator. <laughs> I really like the philosophical bit, and I do feel like collaboration and building network is like a in, super interesting problem in itself, and especially like um, like just very shortly, I think like Web three collaboration works a little different from traditional like systematic um, like organizational like collaboration because the way that I see, for example, DAOs collaborate is one one person being in ten DAOs, and that's how usually knowledge get get like. Uh, cross pollinated, and that's how usually like collaborations happen. Like Web three does have like a, I feel in my mind, the individual basis of, of yeah, like of um, like like how collaboration and networking works. Um, but I want to pass it to Muhammad. Yeah, I was just saying, universities do have outreach people, people who are outreach to industry, people who do uh, breach the silo between different departments. Um, one of the schools I attended 
they had a, a silo between engineering and business. So they had a person whose old sole job was just to find out what was happening in engineering so that business and engineering could work together. So it's not crazy. Yeah, and I think another interesting point to throw out, I know we're, we're hitting time, and John, I, I appreciate you throwing out a, a, a lovely philosophical question that could be its own whole community call with uh, with two minutes left. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's also, uh, right, a whole separate element to consider here is the, the temporal usefulness of whatever versions of the role we come up with. And some things could only make sense at a certain time in developing these initial networks to help certain, catalyze certain portions of it, and like, who knows what that actually looks like. Uh, and yeah, it's uh, excited to have many more conversations along these lines. So appreciate you bringing that up. And yeah, for anyone else who's interested in either the cross-pollination specifically, the broader context, any other elements here, please feel free to reach out. Uh, and yeah, thank you to uh, Fotis and Hazel for putting this together and presenting and the work you're doing on this. So yeah, thank you to y'all on that. And uh, yeah, for everyone else, I hope you enjoyed today's conversation and enjoy the rest of your Thursday wherever you are in the world. Bye, y'all. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.